Rodney. How you been, man? I am doing great, Aaron. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, Rodney, I know we're, we're here Friday. It's a little silly to look back, but I did want, before we get started looking forward to Georgia, just get your thoughts on on last Monday's game, uh, a game that not a lot of people had a lot of optimism going into that game, but Alabama thoroughly dominated that game. I guess I'll start first question. Did you see that? Did you see that performance coming? No, I really didn't. Uh, you know, I thought Alabama had a great chance to win. I really thought that, you know, other than Clemson's defensive line, I thought Alabama was, the, you know, the superior team. Uh, that's heading into the game. Um, you know, I thought Alabama was probably superior everywhere else in my mind. But the problem I had, or the question I had, was, you know, really, to be honest with you, I, I didn't think Alabama had played very well as a team overall uh, from the Texas A&M move, game moving forward. And they really did not seem to play very well against uh, LSU, Mississippi State, and Auburn. I'm talking about the total package. Defensively, I, I thought they had slipped a little bit. And, of course, you know, a lot of that was due to the injuries. We noted that. But this was a healthier team. I thought they appeared to be much more fresh and rested. And defensively, they just dominated the game. And, you know, it really started on the opening kickoff with Trevon Diggs leveling the return guy. I think it was Etienne, but uh, just got off to a good start, Aaron, and they just dominated the game. On the other side of the ball, we'll spend a little time on offense because I don't think anyone, unless you're just an absolute perfectionist, can pick much at what Alabama did defensively. They were just a dominant unit. But what did you think about the offense? Um, probably squandered some opportunities, but but also, uh, and this is what I thought was key to the game, and I said it before the game, is you didn't have to go down and score a ton of points, but you had to possess the ball. They were much better on third down, Rodney. They stayed mm -hmm. on the field, and they ran the ball. 31 carries by the running backs. What did you think of the way the offense performed? Yeah, I thought uh, given what they did, I, I thought Brian Dable, first of all, uh, did a great job. It was, it was somewhat of a modified game plan from uh, what you could tell. Um, it was basically, um, you know, Jalen Hurts, uh, uh, one read options, throwing the football, get it out of your hands quickly, slants, um, pitches, flares, quick throws to kind of negate some of that pass rush. And then they gave him opportunities on the edge with run pass option, either throw it to the guy or run it. So I thought it was pretty simplified in what they did. It was pretty basic, and it was really curtailed to how the defense played. They didn't need to do much different uh, offensively in this game, Aaron, because the defense just completely dominated. So it, there wasn't much risk involved in this offense and, and did not need to be. So I thought from that standpoint, great game plan, and it was executed fairly well. I, I, I don't think there was a lot of complaints. I mean, obviously they missed some opportunities, a few throws the flea flicker would be one that would really stand out to me that could have been a big play um you know and, and maybe some of the things kept uh, not scoring when they had opportunities um to put some more points on the board kept Clemson in the game a little bit but it all worked out in the end Rodney I'm not gonna uh ask you to comment on another man's report but Matt Zenitz works for AL.com a really really good reporter does excellent work and he shortly before the game, put out a, a, a report that that he thought Tua was going to get a couple of, uh, of series and get a chance in that game. Would that have surprised you? And do you think the way the game played out prevented that from happening, the fact that Alabama's defense was playing so well and Alabama, although not spectacular, was moving the football? If the game had gone differently, would you have been surprised to see Tua? Well, I, I think, first of all, like you said, Aaron, the way the game played out, I think it just, there was, I mean, you're, you're sitting there and you're looking at the game and you're saying, if two is going to play, where where in this game does it make sense to put him in? And and I don't think in, in this game, the way it played out, with the defense dominating the way it did, there wasn't a spot that it really made sense. Um, you know, and that's not certainly anything about Tua. That's just why do you, in that situation, put a guy in that really hasn't played in the last four or five games, only one half, and that was against Mercer. And again, I know Tua had great practices from everything I've been told. He was fantastic practices. I mean, looked great. I think they had a plan to put him in in case it was needed. So he was well prepared, I think, to be put into the game. Um, you know, and, and I think because of his preparation and how good he looked and how 
good he was in those practices. I think it probably did, you know, create a thought of, well, maybe we're, we're going to try to get him in this game. Uh, but it just, the situation just was such that I, I don't think it uh, really was needed. Rodney, Nick Saban is one who, uh, who, who, you know, for lack of a better word, can be stubborn. He's got a way of doing things his way. But in um, in talking to some players and, and, and reading what Lane Kiffin had to say after the game, it sounds like Nick Nick kind of modified the practice schedule and, and, and kind of took things not easier per se, but he, he lightened the load up a little bit to keep the keep the guy's legs a little fresher. Do you think that had anything to do with uh, with the performance we saw on defense? Well, I tell you what, if that's what he did, then and, and I, I did see that Kiffin had said that as well. Um, but um, if, if that's what he did, whatever it was, they were certainly fresher. And you know, Aaron, I go back to and I said this. It may have been on your show um, several several weeks ago. We talked about we we're talking about the defense being banged up and how there was a chance that you know when they get rested up, these guys would come back at the end of the year. You know, certainly weren't really in football playing condition and what have you. Talk to Terrell Lewis, Kristen Miller, all these guys. But we said that this layoff could be really beneficial, especially that got the extra week not having to play in the SEC championship game. So we thought that'd be beneficial. And I kind of talked about how in 2010, a lot of those guys on defense were banged up the whole year. Courtney Upshaw played with a high ankle sprain, for example. By the time they got healed up and they played in that uh, bowl game against Michigan State, that was they were finally healed and fresh, and you just saw a completely different defense. I mean, it was a phenomenal defense, and I think we saw a little bit of that in this game. You know, having the opportunity to be healed up now could part of that have been the report that Kiffin said. You know, that he, he gave them a little more opportunity to rest or whatever, cut back on the reps. If that's what happened, certainly it worked out really well. I think because they they sure looked fresh to me. Talking to Rodney Orr uh, of TiderInsider.com. It wasn't all positive, Rodney, uh, from the win. Alabama loses Anthony Jennings. Lester Cotton goes down with an injury. Sticking uh, there on defense, um, it looks like it's going to be a combination of, of Jamie Mosley uh, and, and Terrell Lewis and Christian Miller that will take those snaps. Uh, but how big of a loss in your mind is it that, that Anthony won't be available? Well, I think it was a it's a huge loss. Uh, you know, the guy was really um, starting to come into his own. At, uh, own obviously had a great game, uh, but was at, had a great game against Clemson, but his best game that I recall him having. And you know, he, he's such a um, a player. You know, when you're talking about going up against this kind of offense, I think he was a perfect fit for the for this uh, Georgia offense. You know, a guy on the outside who was physical uh, against the run, uh, also strong against the pass. Uh, you know, in terms of as he could rush the passer, uh, could, hold, could hold the point of attack um, outside, set the edge, so to speak. But I, I just really think that, um, you know, that that's a, that's a real loss. I mean, you know, you've got to replace a guy that has all those tools. Now you got to, you know, kind of use all the other guys, which are very talented guys, don't get me wrong. But, you know, for this particular style, I think Anthony brings a lot of uh, a lot of what you need. You know, it would not surprise me, too. Now, Aaron, I don't – this is just something someone threw out at me that, you know, I trusted LeBron. what they said. And they said, don't be surprised if you see LeBron Ray. Yeah, that's you know, exactly what I was going to ask you, yep. Yeah, that's uh, – you know, that's something – now, again, I, I don't know that that's going to happen, That, but that was a name that was, was mentioned to me is, you know, don't be surprised if you see LeBron Ray line up in some of those situations, maybe run running downs or whatever. Uh, you know, we see the true freshman in there. So, you know, that's a possibility as well. Yeah, I, I brought that up a couple of days ago too because um, he he did early on in his time at Alabama do some reps at outside linebacker. Right. And if you're looking for a guy who you're not particularly worried about the pass rush, the guy who can give you a little more beef to stop the run, he might be a a good look there. Rodney, when you look at this this Georgia offense, obviously a prolific running team, that that you look at it and it, it looks like a pretty good matchup for Alabama because Alabama's mm-hmm. the number one run defense in the country it's it's basically who they are it's the the first part of their dna is stopping the run and then the other half of that equation is you look at a freshman quarterback now that freshman quarterback jake fromm has been great very difficult to rattle him but i also know that jeremy pruitt likes to be aggressive how do you see alabama attacking this georgia offense well yeah you would certainly think that they would be aggressive um you know with uh coming after Fromm, you know test him out see see how he responds um, 
you know, but he's been very, very efficient this year, I think, in most every game. Um, you know, he was uh, in the SEC championship game. I think it was 16-22 to 22 against Auburn in that rematch. I, I don't know what his exact stats were, but against Oklahoma, I think he put it for 200-plus yards. But he rebounded. You know, there were times that, um, you know, when he had to put together drives and make a few throws. Now, he that running game, obviously, you know, I think one of them had – Michelle might have had 180 yards on – very minimal number of carries um and, and also uh, obviously chubb had a big game 140 or so uh they just had their way running the football made it a lot easier for him so th- that that's a big difference aaron i mean if they can't run the football uh like they're accustomed to running the football then all of a sudden more of the burden becomes on um a true freshman quarterback jake Fromm. and i agree with you He's managed things very well. He's he's beyond his years in maturity, but um, you know that certainly would is a huge challenge for a guy like that to maybe have to shoulder more of the load. And if you're slowing down the running game, and all of a sudden Alabama's loading up and coming at you, you know, with all kinds of pressures, then um, you know it can be tough. Now let's say this too. Now uh, he's practiced against that Georgia defense all year, right? Uh, so he's seen a lot of things that uh, he will see. Um, Monday night, he's 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 gone against them. So Kirby Smart certainly challenged him you know, with with that defense and practices. Wrapping up here with our friend Rodney Orr of Tider Insider. Rodney, I guess final thing uh, I'll ask you before the game is uh, who do you like in it, and uh, you, you got a, a score you predicted yet? Yeah, I, I picked it twenty four seventeen Alabama. Um, you know, again, I think it's a a real close game. I think it's a defensive game. I think obviously both coaches know each other really well. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, maybe it's the one guy that'll uh, uh, take a risk or two in the game that that makes a play that, that that decides you know how this game goes. Aaron, that's that's really kind of the way I break it down. 